Welcome to Professional Car Washing and Detailing's Wash Talk. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest is John Michael Tinney from Eastern Funding. Welcome, John Michael. Thank you, Brian. It's nice to be here. We're glad, we're glad you came to Akron today. Uh, we're l really happy to put you on video two times in the same day. That's right. First two times ever? Ever, yeah. Um, I think I'm, uh, think I'm getting the hang of this maybe after the second time. Cool, cool. Well, thank, thank you for joining us. Um, I'd like to get started with a little bit about you and your experience in, in your career path that led you, are, led you to where you are today with Eastern Funding. So um, I got in the industry in 2008 with my dad. Uh, we built our first express wash in uh, East Alabama, and I ran that location for about six years. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I went to a McNeil distributor, did some service and install, got uh, a lot of good experience there on the mechanical side of things, and um, jumped from there to Atlanta to manage a car wash and spent a lot of time there, very high volume site, um, really good experience with memberships and sales and things of that nature. And, um, went from there to back home to Alabama mm -hmm. and, uh, I was an operations manager at that time for four express locations. So kind of a jump up in title, um, had a lot of fun doing that, but got a great opportunity with Eastern and, um, a lot of fun to learn a, a different side of the business with the finance side. So, I've uh, been in the industry for almost 15 years now, and um, it's, uh, it's definitely bid me. I can't get away from it. I, I, I do love it, so a lot of fun. Let's, let's fast forward from 2008 up to today. Today, you're with Eastern Funding. What does your day-to-day -day look like? So, my day-to-day, -day, uh, I work remotely, so I work from the house. Yeah. Um, but it's really just following up with customers that I've spoken to, um, checking on the deals that I have submitted, trying to make sure that they're going through the channels and getting, you know, funded. And um, yeah, that's really it. Calling on vendors, just trying to develop some relationships and, uh, you know, get more deals to come through. Cool. Let's, let's talk about buying car washes. Uh, if, if I'm looking to purchase a car wash, maybe it's my first car wash, maybe it's my 10th car wash. Right. If I'm looking to acquire or build a new car wash, what are the financing opportunities that are available to me? So with Eastern, we do everything through the SBA 504. Yep. Um, with the SBA 504, you'll end up with two permanent loans. Uh, you'll end up with a 20% cash injection on your part. Uh, the SBA considers car washes single purpose for special use, so that's the reason why it's 20%. Uh, typically, if you were to go read about that, you would probably see that you could get in as low as 10 or 15, but uh, we do everything at 20. Um, but you'll end up with 30% from the SBA, um, and then you'll also end up with a 50% loan with us being a third-party lender. Mm -hmm. um, but anytime there's real estate involved uh, or an acquisition, that's how we would do it is to the SBA. Cool. Now, as, as, as a person looking to, to buy a car wash or to add a car wash, is it important for me to look for a lender that specializes in working with car washes, and what are, what are the advantages? Um, I wouldn't say there's any particular advantages. Uh, we do know the industry very well. Um, mm -hmm. We've, you know, obviously done a lot of underwriting on these and we understand the projects, the nuances that go on with them. Um, we're also available. I mean, we're at all the trade shows. Um, we visit those often. We know a lot of the major players in the industry, the equipment manufacturers, and we communicate with them daily. They know who we are. Um, so, you know, from that aspect, uh, I think that gives you some advantages on just the communication lines that are there. Um, and then, you know, one of the other things that, you know, I got to thinking about when I saw this is uh, we're nationwide. So as real estate becomes harder to get a hold of, um, maybe your footprint needs to expand to different states. So maybe if you did go with a local bank that was local to you, maybe they could do your single project, whereas we could do your project over several states. And you could just communicate with one lender instead of having to go to multiple lenders to finance different projects across different states. John Michael, you mentioned that there's an advantage because of the communication, the communication that's the, the, the paths that are already there between you and the manufacturers and some of the other equipment people. Right. You mentioned that there is a is a uh, uh, an advantage from the relationships that you have around the industry. And sure. it, it really sounds like that kind of those together leads them directly to the possibility of a consultative benefit as well, helping them to understand the business a little bit and their business. Right. Is, is, is that accurate? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that's one of the things um, that Eastern does really well um, mm -hmm. on the laundry side and with the car wash side 
is uh, we know the industry very well. Um, so in our own due diligence, uh, we want to see you be in a successful location. So we also do that on our own outside of what the equipment manufacturer would do with their performa. Um, now, do we base a lot of numbers off of the manufacturer's performance? Sure. Um, but we also look at the demographics and traffic count and things like that on our own just to make sure that you're getting in a good location because we want you to be successful and not just uh, get in business to pay our loan back. We want you to make money off of that. So you want to expand and do more. Cool. Let's yeah. let's talk about real estate. I mean, any any business that has brick and mortar is it also in the real estate business? Absolutely. You know, what, what are some of the key factors that, that somebody needs to consider when they're looking for real estate for a car wash? Uh, great question. Uh, I kind of alluded to it in the previous one, but uh, I think some of the things that you would want to look at are what's your population density, what's your demographics in your one, three, and five mile radius. Um, a traffic count is certainly important. Uh, I think I've always kind of went with the notion that a, a 30,000 per day traffic count out in front of a location is, you know, obviously a pretty good number and something to shoot for. Yeah. That's not to say that you can't be lower and be successful. Um, but I think uh, what is the traffic pattern like? Is it a two lane highway? Is it a four lane highway? Is there a median separating that? Um, what's the retail environment around it? Is it being developed with a lot of heavy retail or is it a lot of residential houses? I think there's several factors in that, but those are some of the most important ones. Cool. Let's let's talk about existing car washes. Um, you know there are a, there are a lot of existing car washes that are underperforming. Let's talk about the opportunity that exists to acquire an existing car wash that's underperforming. Hopefully at a hopefully at a good price, right? Right. right. And then to uh, you know put in new equipment, retool that car wash. Let's what what type of opportunities do you see out there for that? And are you helping people to do that? Uh, yeah, we get a lot of those. I would say that we get more on the self serve model. Um, because I think in today's market, um, self-serve model kind of fizzled out, uh, when the express model started booming several years ago. Uh, I think it's making somewhat of a comeback because I think there will always be that, that niche market of the customer that likes to do it themselves, likes automatic. But, um, nowadays they're, they're at such a, a great price. Most of them, especially underperforming that it's obviously cheaper to purchase it than it is to go build it from ground up now. So, um, you can purchase it for a pretty good price and, and retool it. And, um, you know, we met the Den Car guys earlier today and they started pushing memberships through the automatic self surveys. And I just think that's a, a part of the market that's never been tapped into. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Cool. Well, I, I, we've been talking about dogs so much before the interview that I, I, I got to bring up dog washes. Does uh, Eastern Funding do you guys also provide funding for a car wash that wants to have a dog wash? That's a great question, Brian. I actually uh, have not. Um, I haven't encountered that. We did a refinance project for a guy, and he had a dog wash in his, but we haven't actually got any quotes to provide financing for dog washes. But um, I guess if the opportunity presents itself, I guess it's something we could look at. Yeah. I mean, you're obviously a dog lover, so you, yeah, yeah. you should be in I, the business. Right? I like my dog, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure about some other ones, but I love my dog. <laughs> Well, wonderful. Uh, John Michael, is there anything more you'd like to share with our audience? Just uh, that there's a lot of opportunities in the market. Uh, the car wash industry is really booming right now. Uh, I think it's going to continue to, to do that. I, I do think some of the markets are still very underserved. And um, if you got any car wash financing questions or uh, if you're looking for financing, feel free to give me a call. Love to help. Great. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. Glad to be here. And thank you for taking the time to join us on this professional car washing and detailing episode of Wash Talk. We hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.